the game. It's a red skin. So that was just me finishing off the wing. Uh, it isn't 100% complete yet. We still have the winglets uh, to attach and the elevons to connect. So we're gonna do that after we finish the fuselage. So in this part, we're gonna start with the fuselage. But before we do that, I just wanna say a huge thanks to all my viewers for the nice comments and the feedback. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I enjoy replying to your comments. So if you guys have any doubts, any questions regarding this build, make sure you um, use the comment section and I will answer them. And also don't forget to subscribe and watch till the end. And I hope you guys love this video. The first part is the main structure. It's more of a box, but once the whole plane comes together, it will look more curvy and aesthetic. I'm doing two score cuts and removing the material in between the cuts by just pulling it out but later I'll show you a better method. Removing this material helps create a cavity and is meant to make the fold easier and stronger and I'm going to do the same process on all the places I need to fold. So cutting the material with a blade gives you a cleaner surface to work with while pulling it out doesn't but it's a lot of fun. Here I haven't glued the fuselage yet, I just used some um, tape so I can test if everything fits. So we're first testing the engine housing and it doesn't fit. So I took the template, drew the outline, made some adjustments and cut out the excess material. And I'm seeing if I can get rid of some material without compromising structural integrity. Then I removed some more excess material, drawing some lines for the cavity to hold the engine plate. and it fitted well with the sides. Then I'm just gluing back that unwanted cut and gluing the whole fuselage together. That small piece that I'm holding against the wall is just to make sure that all the sides are at right angles. After gluing the sides and the top, I'm trying to bend the rear part to form a more curved shape. With this material, anything with a good curved surface will work. The can didn't really work, so I got something I could press against. This method only works to form very mild bends on the material. Later I'll show you how to do extreme bends. After that, I just bent the bottom plate to apply the glue and kept gluing. You know, it kind of looks like a boat because my little brother was like, are you making a boat? And I'm like, no, I'm making a flying boat. I'm cutting that small section out to fit the engine housing. I'm actually using foam board for the engine housing now, but later I'll test it with color sheet as well. Then I'm just gluing and aligning everything together. And that's a snug fit, just like I imagined. Since the engine housing is done, now let's move on to the bottom intake. So here I'm prepping the parts, score cutting and removing the material to make a good fit. Now I tried using the bottle to bend it, but it just didn't work. So to execute the bend, I'm cutting the top layer to ease the compression resistance. As you can see, it's another level of a bend. Let's do the wave. I'm also doing the same process for the intake walls. After that, I am just taping everything together to see if it fits and straight away I found out that the base of the intake was a centimeter short for the walls and then I took the book of corrections and noted it down. Then I cut another piece and cut out the sides and scored the middle to form that smooth curve. You can really compare the two pieces and see the size difference. 
Now here I'm just taping the side wall so it's just easier for me to glue together. Just before I glue this on, I'm making a small hole to cool the ESC, short for electronic speed controller. This component controls the speed of the motor and tends to heat up because of the high amounts of amps flowing through it. So you have to provide adequate cooling. It's actually the whole purpose of the intake. You can also mount the ESC anywhere outside the plane to get cooling, but the intake method increases the velocity of the air over the ESC and helps reduce the drag. Plus the original plane has it and it's a lot more aesthetically pleasing. Now I'm just gluing on the intake. The cavities on the sides of the intake walls that we cut earlier were meant to be glued on the walls of the fuselage. But the intake after gluing wouldn't stretch so I had to glue it to the base and it turned out to be better. That's a good amount of the rear fuselage done. I'm gonna leave it at that for this video because the next bunch of parts require a good amount of prepping. And I just want to release this video as soon as possible to give you guys something to watch. Next week we're gonna start with the landing gears, nose section and the canards. So stay tuned for that. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and give me a like. So that's it for this week. Until next time. Bye bye.